Should you use a template when you compose on a DAW? Well, yes and no. Why can you never give me a simple answer? Well, let me show you. Hi, this is Sam. Oh, by the way, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. All right. You might have heard or seen composers using templates when they work with a DLW. And what are templates? Well, put it simply, template is just a way to set up your DAW and your instruments to work for you so that you don't have to mess with the preferences and and edit all the stuff so you can go directly towards creativity and do what you hear in your head. See, my channel is about that. How can you get your music out? Not to just sit there and fiddle and tweak and go on with your technical stuff. I mean, the best way to kill your creativity is to not listen to your mind about, you know, the melodies you hear in your head, but instead you go into your, all your instruments and you start to load. Should I use that one or this instrument or no this? And you're probably very bored and you feel very unfulfilled. Here's where a template comes in. My experience is that it's a very good idea to work with a template if you're composing for an orchestra. Because an orchestra is pretty much always the same. It has strings, brass, percussion, winds, etc. Of course, there are variations, but you can always add that later. So, let's say I'm sitting down and I'm working on a melody in the flute. Suddenly, I'm thinking, you know what? It might sound a lot better in the bassoon. So, if I have that bassoon preloaded and ready, I can just go to that channel, try the melody out. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea, but it didn't take me a long time to try it out. If I don't have that preloaded, I have to look for my bassoon patch, Maybe I have several ones, so that one is not, no, this one, or I don't know. And I have to wait for it to load. And you see, it becomes frustrating because maybe that was just one instrument. But if you have to do that a lot, your creativity will go, I, I guarantee it. So if I have the whole orchestra ready, it's like I have a big playground with all these instruments I can try out. How about an example where a template is not a great idea? Well, I would never say it's a bad idea. But you might find that it's limiting. Maybe you want to try something completely different than the instruments you have loaded. And if you have a big template and you're sitting there waiting for it to load and then you feel like it's completely useless, yeah, it's very limiting. But here it's also a question of hardware. Because if you have a gazillion gigabytes of RAM and a very fast SSD drive and maybe many of those and you have a fast CPU, you could practically load all your instruments into one enormous template. Then, of course, you have to wait for that. Another thing you can do is to create templates for your instruments. For example, maybe I have a violin, and that's quite an advanced instrument. And usually, depends on the library, you might have several patches. And then you can create a new patch that consists of several other patches. So you know that every time you load that instrument, you will get everything you need for violin. Then, of course, you can also set up a template so that your DAW works exactly the way you need. You know what? Why don't I just show you instead of babbling here? It is fairly straightforward, but I just wanted to show you some things that I think about when I set up a template. Uh, today, I'm going to work with Albion by Spitfire. I'm not sponsored by them. It's just an example. Okay, so as you might notice, I'm quite quick here because I have buttons and key switches for almost everything in Cubase, something you might want to think about as well. So I'm starting here with Spitfire, and the good thing about a template is that you can set the order of the instruments, and that depends a little bit on how you work. For example, I usually start with the strings, so I usually start with those. You don't have to do that. Uh, some people go in the order of frequency, so maybe they start with the woodwinds first because they usually are the highest frequency. Okay, so a um, few things to note here. Strings, this Albion patch includes most things. So here I have everything that is high. That's a little bit silly because, uh, oh, silly, it's a little bit uh, not entirely true because these patches have the full range, but these two don't. So the way I work is that I don't want to include them because uh, it's confusing for me. It's not confusing, it's just the way I work. I want to separate the, uh, the parts. So what I do here is I actually go in here and unload those. Click on that button here. Yeah, 
it's totally up to you. And then you can key switch everything, which I have done. If you don't know how, you control click on anywhere. And if you haven't done it before, it will look like this. And you can do, do this many different ways. You can do it by, you know, velocity or MIDI or anything like that. It's quite flexible. But in this case, I'm going to use key switches, activate, and then I press the button on my controller or the keyboard that I want. So now when I press these buttons, you can see I can choose. And another thing, I might want that this sound here, the longs, and maybe I want that sound to be the starting sound when I start my template. It's easy, I just leave this one selected and close it and save it as a template later, and that will be the starting sound. So I don't have to go and mess and press buttons and wonder where I am. I can just start to write the way I like to write. And I normally start to write with the longs. Okay, obviously when I call this something, so maybe strings, uh, ah, strings is fine, okay? And then maybe I want a strings low or strings legato. So let's see. Uh, um, see, in Spitfire, the legatos are in a separate place. So maybe I go uh, strings legato here, okay? Now, another thing is that they are separated here into different strings. So what I want to do here is I want to divide these. So I want the lows for themselves and the highs. So I'm not going to have this one loaded here. And actually, yeah, all the other ones can be loaded because I might use them. Okay, go back here. And then I might key switch these as well. And I go into order I normally work. So I work with this one first, control click, key switch, and sorry, and that's going to be the one that's first. And so on. I'm not going to show you everything. And then I set them in that order that I would like to work. And I want this one to start. So I'll leave it there. Okay. So maybe I call it uh, strings uh, low legato, something like that. I don't know. It doesn't matter so much. It's just a name that makes sense to you. Okay. And so on. And I will set up all the strings. Uh, the way Spitfire is done is that low and high and sometimes mid is a very good idea. The same with the winds, with the brass and everything. Okay. And now with some magic, I'm going to jump to a complete template. Okay, so here is a complete template. I've added a few things, uh, except the Spitfire. Like I have a piano here. I have a harp and a choir that is not included in the Albion, uh, Albion library. Because I just need them as well. Okay, so you see I have strings here. I decided to have a strings legato, and then I have a strings legato, um, sordino, and then here, and some runs, and then here I have low legato, low legato, sordino. As you can see, I have color coded, so I know that orange is strings, uh, and so on. So it's easier to navigate as well. The brass section is uh, light green or something. Uh, what you also can do, and I haven't done this time, but actually it seems silly, but it's quite effective. Uh, you can put a picture here and it's not necessary, but I really think it matters. It's easier to navigate. You see where you are. And I've also added an auto zoom. So every channel I have selected. Now, these are things you have to find out how you do yourself there. Every doll is different, but these are small things that I've set up in a way so that it's always starting that way when I start it. Um, you can even go with the layout. You want this, you want it like this, you want the low one to come up, right one, all that stuff. Uh, what's shown over here. Uh, another thing that some people do as well is that they work with their mixer window. I have this in a different screen, but uh, for example, here on the master bus, maybe there are some plugins you almost always use, and then you can always set them in here. Maybe there's even a template you use in those uh, plugins. Uh, I have added uh, a few mech centric, tone centric and a frequency, uh, some EQs and some master plugins. As you see, they are not highlighted is because they're not active in, in Cubase. And I'm sure in other DOS, you can deactivate the plugins, but they're still there. They just don't run, they don't cause any latency because I normally don't add these until much later. I have a brick wall limiter here, uh, which takes almost no um, resources. It's uh, the stock plugin in Cubase, and it's just a, a safeguard, so I don't clip too much. I really encourage you to create templates. It might seem a little bit boring, because maybe you really want to create music. You just don't want to sit down and do all this stuff. But 
you probably will be very familiar with instruments. You will learn them better. You will know more what instrument you actually want to use. And trust me, when you have these templates ready for you, it will save you a lot of time later and frustration. Uh, I have a template that takes about 10 minutes to load. And I know it takes a while, but I have a massive orchestra in front of me. So I don't have to worry about what uh, patches to use because I've set it up exactly for the needs I have. So I start my computer, I start that template, I go and do something else. Maybe I work out, talk to somebody, have a coffee, come back, and I work without frustration. So that's it for today. You know, if you like these videos, you can always hit that like button. That would help me out a great deal. And perhaps even subscribe and you will get more of these videos because trust me, I have a lot of them coming. And even hit that bell button so you will actually get notified. Until next time, I hope you have a great time and I hope you compose a lot of good music. Take care.